Hi, my name is Nathan, and today we're going to do a comic book review of The Closet, issue number three, the final issue, brought to you by Rated Comics. Let's get to it. We begin this issue in the motel parking lot where Tom is smoking a cigarette by himself. A stranger approaches him and asks if he could bum a cigarette off of him, and he's like, yeah, here you go. So he smokes up that cigarette too, and that stranger's like, look, since there are two guys in an abandoned parking lot at a motel or something, I mean, we might as well strike up a conversation here. So what brings you in town? What's on your head? So start by talking. And Tom is like, well, dude, man, a lot is on my head, man. Well, I don't know where to start. You can start by talking. So Tom tells a story where, hey, look, me and my kid and my wife are moving out to Portland. My wife is already there. So I'm driving my kid across town, you know, just like a road trip, father and son kind of bonding. So the guy's like, yo, man, my dad took me on a trip like that when I was a little kid. We did all the little big roadside attractions, all the big ball of twine. I was bored shitless out of my mind, but I still remember this thing too. So I'm gonna tell you as a father, man, if you do this thing right, you will give your son something to remember for the rest of his life. And that's the key word, if he does his right. But as we established in the previous two issues, this brother ain't doing nothing right. And so he asked me, what do you mean if I don't do it right? Well, what's wrong? Well, you know, I'm just exhausted. I really don't smoke, but I need to go outside and have an excuse because my kid won't shut up about this freaking monster. And this guy's like, monster? Yeah, my kid. He keeps seeing these monsters at, and I having nightmares about it. At first, it was just like every couple weeks, but now it's like every freaking night. So back in our apartment in New York where he moved from, he keeps seeing his monster in his closet that comes out at night. I don't know, man. And his mom, Maggie, has been really rough on me lately, you know? Every night I let my guard down, she just goes on, she's on my shit. And if I don't let it go, and if I don't up perform up to par, she just gets on my case. So I trip over something or whatever she's not interested in, and she's just asking me questions about it. And I just want to unwind and let me be on my phone and just kill some time that way. Let me melt my mind as an adult. So he just goes off venting about the kid, the monster, his wife, being on his stuff. If he lets his guard down, doesn't even take out the trash, he gets bitched at, you know? And now on top of that, his wife is complaining about co-workers that are at work. And he's like, yo, man, I'm just tired of hearing about the complaints, man. Same freaking deal, same every day, man. Different day, same circus, you know? So it makes all of it worse. So Tom just lets it all rip. And then he, and he continues on about his son seeing the monster and on top of that, his wife is like, well, why don't you call and get the kids some help? Like call a therapist or something. And I just didn't call. So the guy's like, well, why didn't you call? What? Yeah, why didn't you make the phone calls? Because Tom's excuse justification is because I knew we'll be moving in a few months and he wouldn't have that closet anymore to be afraid of. He, it'll be a fresh start, a fresh start. No more monsters, it'll be a fresh start. Everyone starts fresh. That's what this move is for. So in other words, instead of dealing with the situation at hand, I just rather move and the problems will take care of itself. And this guy is like, okay, so you're angry at your son for being afraid. How old is he? He's four, so the guy takes a puff of his cigarette. He's like, son, it's not my business, but I don't think this is about a monster. Huh? What do you mean it's not about a monster? Well, I know how it started. And the guy's like, well, so Tom's like, okay, well, if we're gonna have a conversation here, you want a beer? No, but I will take another cigarette. That's what you're asking. So he, Tom offers him another cigarette. And so Tom tells him, this is how it started. It started when he was a stay at home dad. He was in charge of all the babysitting stuff while his wife went back to work at his job. So there was this babysitter in the park that he walked his son Jamie at. And one night he grabbed a drink with her and it became weekly drinks. It became something more. And we see a picture of this girl, uh, Megan, not Megan. I called her Megan, but it's it's Maggie. Correction, the girl he had an affair with is Megan. His wife's name is Maggie. My bad, guys. So it was a dumb, silly thing. And it wasn't even something that he was missing in his life or whatnot. He just wanted to know. And it was good to know that someone young and beautiful still thought him as, thought of him as attractive. So she'll make these dumb little mixtapes and write him love letters and pictures of Polaroids. And he would hide that stuff in his son's closet in the corner somewhere where his wife would never look for. And then one night, he goes in the closet to rekindle old spark while his son was in the room sleeping. We see, we go into this flashback. He goes in the closet, looks at the picture of Megan. Jamie, his son, wakes up clutching his koala bat. He opens his eyes and you can tell by that pupil dilation, he saw something that freaked him out. And in that silhouette, from a five-year-old kid or four-year-old kid's perspective, at night, out of random, way out of left field, that would look spooky he screams his dad comes to him, consoles him hey jamie it's okay i saw a monster daddy no you did it i did i did there was not a monster in the closet it was just a nightmare son so his wife walks in and, the, and tom's like yo it's okay our son just had a nightmare maybe he can sleep in our bed for tonight you know and the wife was like okay so 
in the corner of her eyes, in her peripheral, she sees that Polaroid picture and that mixtape, and that's what started it from there. So it got to the point where back in present time, Tom is telling this stranger we had to go to see a couples counselor. I broke things off with Megan, and you know, Maggie, I had to work it out with her. And then Maggie got this job off to the other side of the country, and it seemed like a perfect way to, you know, start fresh, give us a fresh start. But when things started to cool down, my son starts waking up in the middle of the night screaming, and it's just like, freak, man, it's just a stupid freaking fucking closet, you know? So back in New York, we need to do this fresh start. I know it sounds ridiculous. I know it makes you sound like a piece of shit, but actually, Tom, it does make you sound like a POS, you know? So it feels like we're almost in the clear. We're going to have this new fresh start in Portland. But how can I do that if he keeps bringing that freaking monster with him? Even in Pennsylvania at my friend's house, that freaking monster was brought up, and Tom is just venting. So the guy's like, son, I don't know much, but I say one thing I figured out when I was a few years younger than you is that there are no such thing as fresh starts. You don't, you just work, you don't work through a thing or remove it. It just stays there metastasizing like a cancer. So which is a subject I know quite a bit about. If you would have asked me, you would have known. And Tom's like, yo, man, I'm so sorry, man. I was wrapped up in my own stuff. Yeah, you were. But thanks for the smoke, though. I'll hear someone's bull jive for a smoke. And in my case, I'll hear someone's complaining this, too. If you buy a brother a couple cocktails or coffee, I'll take a coffee. I'll hear your complaints at that. So when Tom goes back to the hotel, he's completely oblivious to his son's problem. And this monster who's choking his son out while Tom is completely unaware that the monster's in the building or in the hotel or in the motel room with him. And his son calls out from daddy. Uh, just go to bed, son. We have to leave tomorrow. And there's got to be some kind of symbolism here. If his dad is so completely unaware of the monster in the dark and that's choking his son, there's some symbolism here. So they're 10 miles out of Portland. And Tom tells his son, look, I'm sorry, buddy. We're almost there. I'm sorry. I wanted this road trip to be fun, something to remember by, but I just keep getting angry. And that's not okay, Jamie. That's not who I want to be. And I know it's up to me to make things or change things better. So in a couple minutes, you're going to see our new pretty home in Portland. And you're going to have, and you're going to make a lot of good memories there. Things are going to be different here, Jamie. I promise you that. Okay, bro. Don't make promises you can't keep. So when they pull up to the house, the mom is there and she greets him. How was the presentation, says Tom? They greet each other with the hug, at least the kids, so to speak. But Tom doesn't seem to greet his wife with the same kind of emotion. It was actually good, says his wife. I actually have an office. Huh, not just a tiny room pretending to be an office. No, Tom, an office. Well, I can't wait to see it. So Jamie's like, do I have a room? Can I go upstairs and see it, you know? So he goes upstairs and sees it. And then his wife tells him, hey, Matt called. And he said there was some trouble with Jamie. Oh, oh no, it's nothing. I let the movers pack his suitcase so I didn't have all of his stuff with me. It's fine. He shouldn't have said anything. Whoa, Tom, I already unpacked everything and there wasn't a loose suitcase. Oh, Tom realizing he shot himself in the foot. And she's like, how many days have you known this without calling me? And she didn't really yell at him. I just added that for emotion. But you just know some emotional spark is going to get started with that. And he's like, really? This is how we're going to get started our life here? So right away, an argument ensues. And we see poor little Jamie clutching his koala bat in his room as the monster's hand emerges from the closet. And that's where we conclude this issue. To me, the closet has always been Tom's story. It is not Jamie's story. He is simultaneously the monster haunting his son and the one being haunted by the closet. And it's self-centeredness. His self-centeredness is the heart of everything happening to him and his son Jamie that's what the monster's about Tom is the monster within and is manifesting through Jamie even a stranger he meets in the pre in the beginning of this issue as with him knowing yo you are messed up my man and you are the monster strangling your son so obviously him being oblivious to the monster strangling his son in the second in the bed of their shared hotel room perfectly encapsulates that notion did I enjoy this entire issue I sure as hell did link in the description if you wish to add this comic book to your comic book collection I would like to see this adapt it into a story or not a story like a show or a film or something probably a show or like a short mini series i think it'll be cool like that especially for a halloween special because as a kid i could definitely relate to a monster in the closet or a monster under the bed don't remind me of that no, don't judge me okay i'm sure you guys have that too but with all that being said the closet issue number three what you guys think of the comic book comment below let me know and also if you like the content we're throwing up you know what to do. Don't be shy. Don't be stingy. Here at Rated Comics, to do awesome comic book reviews, comic book related content with the occasional comic book giveaway. Thanks again for watching. Until next time.